The following events were recorded as they happened at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. On Life's Little Miracles holiday special, Brittany hopes for the gift of sound. Noah has a holiday accident. Allison's wish is to be with her family at home. Aiden and Daniel undergo major surgeries. And Haley waits for the ultimate present, the one that will save her life. I guess what I want, really want for Christmas is a new liver and a new pancreas. At the Hospital for Sick Children, every effort is made to get every child home for the holidays. But with just two weeks before Santa's arrival, one-year-old Aiden needs surgery for prune belly syndrome, a malformation of his abdominal wall that can cause serious breathing problems. So if you see a, a fairly distended, um, the cause is still not, not very well known. And the main thing is what they want to do is basically tighten the tummy muscle, take up some excess skin. It's fairly extensive. So obviously there's all, all kinds of risks that goes along with that. <laughs> uh, we will really hope he's going to be home for Christmas. Getting Aiden home for the holidays could be a challenge. The surgery he's about to undergo involves a massive incision that could lead to a long recovery. Morning, guys. How are you? Morning. 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 You all set? Yes. A prune belly is a very, very rare problem. And what it is, uh, I want you to think of a brick wall. Right? And the brick wall has lots of bricks and very little mortar or cement between the bricks. And with the prune belly, for some reason, we get probably the same number of bricks, but very, very far and very spaced apart with lots of cement in between. And that's why they can't contract and generate the same power that a normal muscle can. But then we're going to double breast the muscles. We double up on the number of functioning muscle units around. Okay. And our hope is that when we double up on the muscle units, that he's going to be able to cough better, he's going to be able to breathe better. All right, I'll see you in a bit then. Thank you very much. All right. Fifteen-year-old Haley has been waiting for a liver and pancreas transplant for 10 months. She's suffering from liver failure and needs continuous medication to stay alive. Haley first got sick when she was eight years old. We found out that she has um, liver disease called primary sclerosis and cholangitis. At the time, they told us that one day she'll have to have a transplant because there's no cure. I don't remember much happening before that, so well, my life kind of started at that point, I guess. No, I don't think she can remember when she felt well. Uh, Haley always, you know, it's always been Haley sick or, you know, so she was in the hospital in July. And, then got out for a couple of weeks, and then back in in August, then got out, then back in September. And then in October, we decided, her, her doctors decided that it was enough, you know, she wasn't going to be getting any better. So they said, that's enough, uh, you know, you're in the hospital now, and we'll just wait for the transplant. Oh, Haley so will smart. have to make do with celebrating the holidays in the hospital. We've been thinking about what to do for the holidays this year, and we honestly have no idea because we're kind of stuck here. We can't really have like a turkey for Christmas or candles for Hanukkah or any of those things. It's, we can't really go, I can't really go Christmas shopping. We celebrate Hanukkah and Christmas. So Christmas and presents and Hanukkah, they were, you know, everything. That's the big season at our house. I guess what I want, really want for Christmas is a new liver and a new pancreas. Like, that'd be a good gift, I think. That'd be the best gift. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. We know it'll that, come one that day. or like a monkey. <laughs> that would also be good. You're not getting a monkey, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Aiden's prune belly surgery is minutes away. Dr. Khoury gives his team the rundown on the procedure. Uh, the abdominal wall was quite lax, and uh, how it's actually fallen off to the, to the sides. Instead of being a nice, tense abdominal wall of a baby, and we can see that all this is going to be extra skin that needs to be taken to remodel and refashion uh, the abdominal wall. And we need to do this all the way up to the, to the chest wall. Doug, can we take the uh, room temperature back down to 19, please? We're going to cover him right away. Okay. Knife, please. So start about this crease here. 
Okay, Ross? Yes, thank you. Start the bunch. Good. Aiden's surgeon begins to cut through his abdominal muscles from the top of his chest to his pelvis. This kind of wound is one of the most painful and difficult from which to recover. Seventeen-year-old Allison suffers from a life-threatening immune deficiency. She has needed a ventilator to keep her breathing for almost a year now. The breathing tube is inserted into her trachea, which gives her some mobility and allows her to speak. Allison got very sick when she just turned 14. The illness she has is a very rare one. There are only 15 reported cases in the world, and they haven't really got um, treatment for this sickness that she has, which is lymphangiectasia. The doctors here are trying to treat according to case studies that they have read about. Through my whole stay in the year, I've only been home about three times. And uh, it's hard for me to get home as I've been had to be straight. So anytime I go home, I have to have a nurse. I'm trying to get home for Christmas. It's like a tradition on Christmas Eve, we open up our gifts at midnight, and there's a here, our trip train. Well, Emma is. <laughs> Emma's trip trained, so oh. she knows how to change my And she can take me home. And she actually is arranging it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A real dream wish for Allison to spend Christmas with her family. Mm -hmm. But Allison's visit home could be cancelled at the very last minute. If the critical care unit becomes too busy, Emma will not be released from her duties, and Allison's doctor needs to ensure she is strong enough to make the trip. We always get a real Christmas tree, so it's usually right when I enter the door. It's there and it's decorated. So I just want to see the house and it's decorated. And then I want to go see my room. Nineteen-year-old Daniel was born with a cleft palate. His jaw doesn't close well, and his face has a flat appearance. Just 10 days before Christmas, and more importantly, the family dinner, Daniel's jaw will be broken and rebuilt. Then I won't be doing much for Christmas. I won't be eating my normal food, so that's going to be a drag, but it's got to get done, so. Well, I won't be able to, to spoil him with the turkey and the stuffing and all that neat kind of stuff. Um, I guess he's going to have to have pureed everything, so. This is your Christmas present for Yeah, Merry kids. Christmas. Merry Christmas, sick kids. Mm. This is your yeah. present. Awesome. Aiden's parents wait for news on his prune belly surgery. His surgeon doubles up his abdominal wall to make it stronger. All right, I'll take a stitch, please. The huh? Once this is done and it's nice and tight, We'll see how much redundant skin there is here, and we're going to excise the extra skin. Once the excess skin is removed, the massive opening in Aiden's body will be closed. The huge wound puts him at risk of infection and will make it even more difficult for him to breathe when he's taken off life support. Daniel is taken to the OR room for a final meeting with his surgeon. Good morning. How are you guys doing? How are you? Nice to see you. So, are you all set? Do you understand what we're going to be doing today? Uh, I have an idea. Okay. Why don't, you, why don't you tell me and I'll tell you if you're uh, right. I think you're breaking the bottom jaw in three places and shifting it some whatever way and then the top one in two places, taking the bone from my hip and putting it up there and then bringing the teeth over. 
Exactly. You'll have a little white uh, splint on the upper jaw just to hold things in place. Yeah. So I'm afraid it's going to sort of affect your Christmas dinner. He's a very good looking boy as it is. We're just going to make him just that little bit better looking. Now, he has to have obviously soft food, but um, can it be cut up in small pieces or so? Or, or yeah, he it's, can it's still... a no chew diet. So anything okay. that um, he can manage that he doesn't have to chew too hard is okay. fine. All right. And so, uh, you know, chewing steak or pizza is kind of out because you okay. need to really put a lot of force on that. But How small pieces I, are fine. How long am I not going to be able to eat normal um, food for? About three years. Right. No. <laughs> no, it'll be, usually it's for about six to eight weeks after the operation that you're on a soft diet. All right, I'll see you in the room. All right. Good. 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 Okay, you're going right up to sleep now, all right? We'll look after you when you are. We'll see you when you wake up. Oh. Once Daniel is anesthetized, his jaw reconstruction will begin. So, so this is Daniel's occlusion, and you can see that the lower jaw doesn't articulate particularly well with the upper teeth. There's a very big space between the central incisor and the canine tooth where the cleft is. And so the plan to today is we're going to be cutting the jaw in a very controlled fashion. And everything will be reassembled in a way that uh, gives the face better balance, gives the teeth better relationship with each other. OK. Bite block, please. Saw, please. Aiden's abdomen has been closed. He is transferred to the critical care unit. Hello. All done. Things went really well. Um, he's doing OK. Uh, we're going to leave him intubated, though, just so that um, the machine can breathe for him, because the abdominal wall is much, much tighter. The, the pressure inside the abdomen is higher now. He was used to a big, floppy tummy, and now it's tight. It's and, yeah for the first couple of days until it relaxes a bit. He's not going to be as comfortable breathing on his own. Okay. The other issues are, you know, wound infection with all the skin flaps that we moved around and all yeah. the... So these are all things that we need to watch for. Okay. Very good. All right. All right. Thank you very okay. much. My pleasure. Thanks. All right. Yeah, he is, he is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm going to do a quick peek. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we're going to see about it. I'll let you, yeah, I'll let you have a look and I'll show you what, um, if you guys have questions about everything. He's, he's half, half his size. Is he? Yeah, yeah. 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 What yeah. size diaper is that? Oh, it looks like a five maybe, is it? But he, he was on a, on a six. Oh, okay. So, so it's a lot less. Haley continues to receive the medication that will keep her alive as she waits for organs for her transplant. She and her mother try their best to keep their holiday spirit. Today we are going to make cookies because we thought we need to do Christmas baking somewhere. And since we usually we, we do it at home, but we don't happen to be there. So today we're going to make uh, chocolate chip cookies and then we're going to make some shortbread cookies. Uh, I guess my favorite thing around Christmas is really, uh, you know, being with my family and the food. <laughs> I really like to like help cook and stuff, so it's a lot of fun for me. If this was at home, I'd have Christmas carol music on, but and I'd have earmuffs on. <laughs> I never, I could never pass on my love of Christmas carols to my children. When I'm older, I'll like them. Okay. Old like when. Like, uh, like 30s. 
Our family has a lot of like Christmassy traditions, <laughs> like Christmas morning. Well, we uh, always open the stockings first because they somehow end up in our rooms. Almost ready for the trooper. Another one of our Christmas traditions is on every Christmas Eve we go out for Chinese food or we order in. And that's apparent, apparently, that a lot of uh, Jewish families actually do that. <laughs> Saw the surgeon this morning, and just walking down the hall, and every time I see her come near our ward, I think, oh, is she coming? <laughs> is she going to tell us? And every, <laughs> each time I'm disappointed, I'll tell you. It, it's, it's really hard when that happens, because you're hoping so much that something's going to happen soon. Daniel's jaw surgery has been underway for two hours. His surgeons have cut his malformed upper jaw into two pieces and now secured in its new position. So what we've done now is we've wired the two pieces of the upper jaw together in the splint and then wired the two pieces together to the lower jaw. So everything is now stable and moves as a single unit. And we'll put some plates and screws across it so that that way it'll stay there and won't move. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the lower jaw, complete the cuts on the lower jaw, and then we'll reposition the lower jaw. After such extensive jaw surgery, it's hard to believe Daniel will recover in time to make it home for Christmas, let alone be able to eat dinner with his family. One day after Aiden's prune belly surgery, he remains in the critical care unit on a breathing tube. You had a good night, I hear? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. A little yeah, bit of great. fever, but that's, it. that's to be expected, sure. so. Yeah, yeah. Mostly from the chest and the tube and stuff. Legs are nice and warm. Let's have a look at his numbers here. That's great. His airway pressures are actually, his airway pressures are quite good. And the one thing that we're always concerned about is that with the tightening of the abdominal wall, that the airway pressures increase, and that's the reason why we kept him, uh, uh, we kept the tube in overnight. And um, if his airway pressures are low, he doesn't require high pressure ventilation, then we can watch for the next little bit and uh, maybe. Uh, later today or tomorrow, start thinking about weaning him off the ventilator. And if, if we can get him off safely without him having to overuse his abdominal muscles, then that'd be great. Yeah. If all is well, I'll see you tomorrow, but otherwise I might pop back in uh, later this evening, depending on how things are coming. Okay, great. Excellent. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. No one wants their child to have surgery, especially just days before Christmas. But four-year-old Brittany is on the verge of becoming deaf, and it is crucial that she undergo surgery for a cochlear implant as soon as possible, or she risks losing her language skills. Frosty? Frosty? I think she was about 14 months when she was actually diagnosed. You could always sneak up on her in her room and stuff like that. You yeah. could just tell. You could just tell that she couldn't hear you that well. Like when you, I don't know, you sit and you beside her at night, you know, you call your daughter's name and you expect them to turn and to react to stuff like that. And she just didn't. So we, we definitely knew early, quite early, that there wasn't something quite right. So are you going to color more? <gasps> Who's that? A snowman. She actually does really well with the hearing that she has but it's just not enough. She's, she's mainstreamed in JK right now, but it's just what she's got is not enough to get her, you know, really ne where she needs to be. So. Pretty well have to be you or I to understand a lot of things she says because we've been with her since day one, so we understand a lot of things that she says that most people wouldn't understand, so. But for the cochlear, she went through the whole candidacy process and she fit right in, so it was good. Perfect she Christmas yeah, gift, so. Perfect Christmas yeah. gift. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you.
You do a nice job. Aiden continues to recover from his prune belly surgery. Respiratory therapists will remove his ventilator. Using his new abdominal muscles to breathe could prove difficult. Hi, bud. Oh, All finished. All finished. so He's got a little bit of heart. Yeah. But he's got good air entry all the way through. Okay. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay. One less tube. Yeah. One less. <laughs> the thing is, question is just taking one tube at a time. It's just a, that's a, there was ten, there's nine left, so we'll, we'll work down. <laughs> and one less tube means Aiden is one step closer to going home for the holidays. Brittany's okay. cochlear implant surgery is minutes away. I love you. Her parents consult her surgeon one last time. You want to know anything? Um, yeah. What would you like to know? Um, Here's the device if you want to send any greetings through the hermetically sealed package. This is the actual Yeah, you device? have to send good yeah. vibes directly through. This is hers. It's oh, going okay. in her head. Excellent. What would you like to know? Um, no, just just to recap on a bit about how long. Three hours. Three hours. About three hours, maybe a little more, a little, I don't know. Okay. Three hours, usually. The cochlear implant will allow Brittany to hear in a brand new way. The hair cells, the little nerve sensors inside her cochlea, um, are genetically predisposed to sort of fail fast. See, this little device here goes right past them and stimulates the nerve. Then, then this little brain that's so beautiful and strong and healthy and able to, to learn things, it will very quickly realize that when mom and dad open their mouth and say, I love you, then, then that shock in, in, inside the, the, the nerve corresponds to language and they learn how to put language back together again very, very quickly. Okay. Did good. you put in some good vibes? I did, yep. Thanks. Said my thoughts. Yeah? <laughs> It's the price of a uh, Honda Accord, so. Oh, nice. <laughs> you tiny person, is there anything you want to know, or can I just squish your legs a bit more before the operation goes on? They're very squishy today. I can do anything with you playing Yoshi, can't I? Hey? Okay? I'll see ya. I'm gonna do my thing. Okay, thank you. Thanks. See ya, punklet. The operating room is ready for Brittany. Give me a hug. Hug and a kiss. Her mother will stay with her until she's asleep. You want to walk? That's okay. You come on. Okay. So bye, Daddy. I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Daddy, come on. I'll be right here. Right here. Wait for Brittany. Wait here. My hands. No. And if you want, you can lie down. Okay? Do you want to lie down? Do you want to lie down? Very good. Brittany's surgeon begins the operation by opening up the tissue above her right ear. This is just lifting up the, uh, the covering of the bone to try and get access to the bone, which is where we're going to start drilling in a few seconds. The implant will be placed against the covering of the brain, so a hole must be drilled into Brittany's skull. It's a very delicate procedure. And there's these hugely, you know, large structures in here. There's the facial nerve and the sigmoid sinus, a big blood vessel in the vein, and the brain and all sorts of stuff.
It's been three days since Aiden's had his prune belly fixed in surgery. The, the incision is going to take quite a while to, to heal. They said in babies it actually takes years. When adult it's like a year. Where, not heal, but to be kind of a bit, I think, less obvious. Yeah. You mind a peek? Mm, yeah. So I started removing the tapes last night, so that's why I'm in my sleeper. Yeah. I took off the hospital gown and I started removing the tape by myself when mommy saw me, so that's why I'm <laughs> covered in my sleeper. <laughs> I heard this morning that he can go home, so we're very happy about that. So I'm definitely going to be home for Christmas to get all my presents. Yes. Two days before Christmas, Haley's managed to shop for presents. I basically told my sister what I wanted her to buy for everyone else, and I told my dad what I wanted him to buy, and they took money out of my jar of money at home. But Haley still waits for the gift she needs most organs for her transplant. I am sick of waiting for the transplant. It's, it seems like it's been a while, but hopefully it'll happen soon. Probably. You never know what could happen any time. But needing both a liver and pancreas means the wait could be longer than Haley might hope for. Brittany's parents wait for the completion of her surgery. Dr. Papson is ready to insert the cochlear implant. Okay, now I just slipped the device into the pocket that we've made for it. This little number is a, uh, about 28,000 bucks. Worth every single penny of it to young Brittany. Ooh. We'll have a lifetime of hearing with this little baby. And now I will take the electrode ever so daintily and stick it in the hole, as it were. Okay, so now the device is in. We're now going to test the device to see if it's working. So Dougie is going to start to stimulate it. Rose, <coughs> rose and suck, rose and suction. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Nice and clear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, lights, camera, nausea, here we go. I'll be in the middle there, four steps. I got a couple of balls to go. Back. Once Brittany's wound has been closed, the surgery will be complete. It's been two days since the completion of Daniel's jaw surgery. He's swollen and covered in hives. Good morning, Daniel. Now, Daniel, we understand your pain is good, but that your other side effects are not. So you've got itching. Is he itching all over? Yeah, a rash that's come up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Which is worse right now, the pain or the itch? Itch. Itch. Okay. So what our plan would be was to take you off the medicine you're on now. The morphine. For your pump and give you a different medicine. So we take you off this one so you don't have the itching. Some people itch with this one and don't it doesn't bother them at all with the other one. So we want to keep you comfortable what we don't want to be have you itch. Do you have any questions for us, Daniel? Do you want to go to dinner tonight? Oh it's <laughs> <laughs> a good invitation. Thank you. You can't eat though, so let's wait till you can eat. Okay? That's okay. great. Well, well, we'll check in later and make sure the new medicine is uh, the first offer I've had today. Um, we'll make sure the new medicine's working okay. You better right? be careful. Dr. Kemp might take you up on your yeah, I'm a good eater. And she'll make you pay. Yeah. Being able to eat may be way off for Daniel. Brittany's cochlear implant surgery is complete. Hey, guys. Hey. We're all done. Went in. The cochlea was lovely. The facial nerve was 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 seen all the way, wasn't touched, wasn't damaged. Good. She has a big head dressing with a little rubber drain and both the rubber drain and the head dressing come off to moron. The only thing that really makes them recover faster is if, if dad doesn't do a lot of housework. 
in the first week. You know what I'm saying? Of course, that makes total it sense. It does. Yeah. See, if he spends some quality time with her and watches the Leaf games, then then chances are it will heal better. I don't know how it works, but that's just the right. latest teaching. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll make sure that happens. Sounds good. <laughs> Anything else? This is it. Anything else? Just made a new best no, friend. That's good. That's <laughs> yeah. good. Thank you. Thanks very much. My pleasure. Awesome. Thank you. I'll see you guys. Okay. This looks good. Brittany will stay in the hospital overnight. She will return in four weeks to have the cochlear implant activated and her ability to hear restored. It's Christmas Eve. Allison's wish has come true. The critical care unit has been able to spare her nurse and a respiratory therapist to care for her at home. family is grateful to have her near. This year started oh, with, uh, with Allison being very, very sick. And during the course of the year, we've seen such wonderful and marvelous progress. A year ago, we might not have expected Allison to be here, but look at her here today. She has full of color, and she's well on the road to recovery. Dear Lord, thank you for your mercies, for the graces and the blessings that you give to us. And we ask for a special blessing on Allison for her full recovery, Lord. We make this prayer through your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, folks, it's a happy season. It's a happy season. That's it. 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 That's it.
Who's okay, this? Okay, okay. Oh, Noah. A little bit okay. scared of Santa Sometimes this year. Two-year-old yeah. Noah has been brought to the hospital's emergency room. Oh. Thank you, Santa. He injured his foot in his rush to get his stocking. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Who is that? Who is that? Hello. Oh, hi. hi, Noah. You don't look happy. <laughs> on Christmas Day. Where's so what happened then? He was on our bed, um, and uh, we were just getting up in the morning to go get uh, their stockings. And he usually slips off the bed, turns himself around, and, and gets off. And he, he slid off, so but he slipped the wrong I think way. we had a little too much force. Uh, probably the excitement. And then he just stood there. And we're like, why wasn't he moving? And then all of a sudden, then he just fell to the floor. And is which one is he complaining? Is the yeah, right leg? He's right. The right. Yeah. Has he said where it hurts? Yeah, I say, where does it hurt? And he'll lift his foot up to show me. You just lie up here so he can take his feet. No! I think because we're not getting a good enough oh, okay. description of yeah. him, oh, okay. other than screaming the minute <laughs> we pro we may need to do a bit more of the x-rays just sure. to see. Okay. Once the x-rays are back, I'll look at it up on our computer and make sure that we don't see any fractures and go from there. Okay. All right. We're just talking. Sorry, we'll get tabs and wait outside. Okay. Okay. And we'll be in as soon as possible. Okay. Okay, Noah, you're being so good. Just staying nice and still. If Noah's X-rays show a fracture, he may be spending all of Christmas in the hospital. Happy holidays. Haley knew there was no chance she'd get home for Christmas, but waiting for her transplant over the holidays is getting tougher. Smile for Santa. Sorry, there's no zoom. All right, one, two, three. Oh, good picture. Oh, that's great. Oh, Thank you, Santa. Thank you. All right. Hopefully before I turn 16, I'll get my uh, transplant. And that's not that long away. Yeah. Yeah. It's like less than a month, so... Uh, you better hurry up. <laughs> Not like we can speed it along, though, because that wouldn't be good. <laughs> mm. well, I guess it's just all waiting and that kind of thing. It's hard to do, but there's nothing else to do, so. Whatever. <laughs> Haley's family has arrived to celebrate Christmas Day. <laughs> she got a very large box of nerds. It's her, her favorite uh, goodie, especially for taking after some bitter tasting medicine. Yeah. <laughs> Which a lot of them are. <laughs> so we don't know how much longer she'll have to take that bitter medicine, but now we're prepared for it. Well, you got 30 pounds there, so I'm, imagine you'll have enough uh, for after the transplant. <laughs> If not, I'll eat them. <laughs> does, he have, does he have some buttons on his jacket? A button. A jacket. Jacket. Yeah. Noah's parents wait for the results of his x-rays. Two hours and counting till Christmas dinner. <laughs> if Noah has a fracture, they may be having Christmas dinner in the hospital. How are we doing? Are you going to start crying when I walk in the room? The uh, x-ray doesn't show anything obvious in terms of a fracture or a break or anything else. You can see that there is some swelling. In, <coughs> to me, where he has the most pain no. is more in the middle of his foot here okay. rather than in his ankle. Okay. The x-rays don't show any break on either. Okay. But for now, what we would recommend is really treating his discomfort. So treating him with ice okay. for 10 to 15 minutes at a time. And as well, we would recommend just using something like Advil or uh, Motrin, okay. some form of anti-inflammatory, 
that will give him pain relief and also oh, okay. may have an effect on decreasing the inflammation. If he's getting worse, if you're finding that it's been, you know, by tomorrow morning, if he still isn't putting any weight down on it, um, it's starting to get a lot more red, much more swollen, anything else, feel free to come back, we're open. Um, you can make it a Christmas Day Boxing Day special. <laughs> oh, amazing. That's your good. Coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay, buddy, now you're happy? Bye-bye. You happy? Okay, thank you, Doc. It's been four weeks since Christmas. Although Brittany's family celebrated at home, today is the day they've been waiting for. Brittany will receive the best present her parents could hope for. Her hearing will be restored. How's it been going? Good. Good. Are you ready? Let's you get go? you going. Come on down. So today is the big day. We're gonna activate the device. So we are about to go live. When you see the yellow bars come up, she will be able to hear everything. Okay, so be, all the electrodes will be working and you can be the first to talk to her. Hi. Okay. Hello. Hi. She can hear you. Doctor. Can you hear mommy? Yeah. Can Hi. you hear daddy? Brittany. Brittany. Hey. Hi. What'd you, what'd you make? Play Doh? Okay. I'm a little worried. A little worried? One yeah. more. It's a good job. It's okay. Okay. Thanks. Good girl. Oh. It's okay. Okay. She's a little She's worried. Listening Can through the implant brain? is very different than listening through the I hearing aid. Good girl. Hey, don't cry. You good girl. What's the matter? You okay? You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, you did good. Did you listen? Yeah. Did you say hi, Daddy? Hi. The goal today is just to get her used to listening through the cochlear implant. Okay. She'll be able to hear everything. Okay, but think of her ears as being like a newborn baby ear. Right. She's got to learn how to listen through the implant. Everything will sound different. She may not recognize sounds. Um, she may not respond the same way she did before we activated the implant. That's okay. Her brain is just getting used to listening to the implant. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a very normal reaction for children to be scared and a little bit upset at the very first initial activation. Okay. So, this is, she did, she did well, okay. very well. I love you. Okay. I love you. Bye. Bye. We'll it will take some time for Brittany to become accustomed to the new sounds generated through her cochlear implant. For her parents, it's the best Christmas gift ever. It'll give her a chance. That's what it means, totally. And after six months in hospital, Haley has finally received her ultimate Christmas gift, a liver and pancreas transplant. Well, we, we thought we were getting a, a, a Christmas present of a donation, organ donation, but it actually turned out to be a little later. But still, it was a real miracle of a gift, my God, to have a, a liver and a pancreas and you know, she feels a lot better. She looks a lot better. And now for us, Haley has her chance. So that's amazing. And just three weeks after the transplant, Haley can finally go home. Sure this is actually happening? Do you see your name off the door? Haley will be closely monitored to ensure she doesn't suffer organ rejection. But so far, her future looks great. And hopefully she'll spend next year's holidays at home. We don't even hold the record here for longest stay. We hold the record of the longest goodbye. <laughs>